All right, folks, so in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the ARRL antenna book. This is the most recent edition, the 24th edition, and uh, this book has been around in various editions for quite some time, and uh, was considered kind of the Bible for amateur radio operators, ham radio operators, who are looking to learn about antennas or build antennas. It is a fantastic uh, reference. So I recently did a video on the Roth Hamels antenna book, which is its 13th edition and newly available in English. It's been published uh, the other editions over the last uh, close to 70 years, I think, in German. And um, after I posted that video, a lot of folks asked me how this book compared to the antenna book. And so we're gonna go through the antenna book and look at it. Um, if you want more detail on the Roth Hamels book, go ahead and check out my other video. And I'll have a playlist below where you can where you can see this. And uh, the one thing that I did want to say before we got started is the antenna book seems to cover antennas more from, hey, let's talk about dipole antennas and we're going to learn all these different things and some antenna theory about dipoles. In the Roth Hamels antenna book, it looks at specific dipoles and talks about them specifically. So it seems like the antenna book is a little bit more generalized and this one is a little bit more specific. Originally, I was saying that, um, first off, I love the antenna book. It's fantastic and I use it all the time. It also comes with digital media, uh, which is a huge bonus and it's less expensive than the Roth Hamels book. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, and I was saying that I like the Roth Hamels book a little bit more, and uh, that may just be because it's the new shiny penny on the bookshelf, but uh, I do like that I can find out specific information about a particular antenna that somebody may be talking about. That said, let me get uh, zoomed in and we'll take a look at the antenna book and walk through it. All right, let's, uh, let's get started. So what I did is I went through and I marked a bunch of pages with uh, post-it notes. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to mention, and I think I did a little bit as I talked about the downloadable supplemental book. So I actually have this in electronic format, along with a lot of the uh, tools some software and some examples that are referenced in the book, um, some reference material and stuff like that. So it's, it's super duper handy. Uh, let's take a quick look and we'll start with the table of contents and that'll t let you know a little bit about what's inside the book. Um, we have basic antenna topics, uh, some fundamentals here, and we'll take a look at those. Then it goes through dipoles and monopoles, which are the beginner type antennas and stuff that uh, everybody should be really familiar with. Um, ground propagation, important, important stuff. Um, then we start to get into more specialized antennas like loops, multi-element arrays, log periodics. Uh, it has a chapter on antenna modeling, which is awesome. Uh, talks about some single band antennas. So let's just take a quick look at chapter one, which is uh, antenna fundamentals. And I really like this because it talks about things that you should know, like your E and H fields. Um, as you flip through here, you'll see it talks about displaced current, um, speed and propagation of wavelength here. Um, it, it does a really good job explaining it. Now it starts to get into some pretty, uh, what I would consider complex math quickly. And uh, there are large portions of this book that are uh, very technical. And uh, some of it's over my head just being candid about that. But there's a lot of content in here that's also aimed and targeted towards beginners. Um, when you buy this book at first, you look at it, it might be a little intimidating, it might be a little overwhelming. But over time, the more you use it, the more you learn about ham, the more you learn about antennas, the more this book makes sense. And it is a long-term kind of reference material that you would keep in, uh, in your bookshelf. Let's flip over. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit here. Let me just get this out of the way. Um, about things that are important, like uh, feed point impedance, mutual impedance. It has really great document. Um, it has really great diagrams in here that allow you to understand the mechanics of the antenna and how the wave actually impacts it, uh, where you would look to see impedance and current transfers on your antenna. Really cool. Um, and then there's a nice selection here around, or nice section on directivity and gain. And it talks about how you can look at uh, radiation patterns and how to read them. So it's really, really good uh, at learning for learning about those types of things. Here is just something that I highlighted. It has these like breakouts or call outs where they talk a little bit uh, about these polar plots that you can look at to understand how your antenna is actually going to perform. Uh, and it does a great job of educating you on those topics. Here is a section uh, that I mentioned earlier about dipoles and monopoles. 
Uh, and it goes into that. It talks a little bit about electrically how these antennas work. And uh, I find that to be very helpful information. And then uh, here are some dipole resonant lengths that you can use in the construction of an antenna. So this book is also works really well as an antenna cookbook or for somebody who wants to be an antenna builder. Um, it has a section on formulas and then it talks about like isotropic radiators and how your antenna would radiate um, out in free space as well as above ground. And then I wanted to mention that each chapter has a table of contents. And so you can just see here what, what they would be for, but for chapter three, here are the different sections. So it makes it really good to look up and be able to find the material that, that uh, you're interested in studying. There's a really good chapter, like the other book, on the effects of ground um, and grounding. Like uh, here is a, a picture of the United States, and it talks about how terrible the ground is in your area. Um, and then it talks about different types of conductive materials and things like that. Uh, pretty, pretty handy stuff. Uh, there's a really good section on verticals. Uh, with verticals, uh, gr ground's always important, but it's particularly important when building or constructing vertical antennas. And you, whether your antenna is ground mounted or above ground mounted, you'll have to take into different considerations. Um, and it also talks a little bit about how, how you can have power losses in the soil and why you would maybe want to construct your own ground plane. Good section here, chapter four, on uh, radio wave propagation. So it talks a little bit about the nature of radio waves, uh, radio, <laughs> radio waves um, and how things like uh, um, propagation against the ionosphere works. Uh, here's a section here on ground waves, for example. This is how um, your waves traverse the earth, uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it talks about line of sight down here, which is an important topic to understand. And here are some different patterns, just uh, helpful inf information. And then a, a really good section here on sky wave propagation, which is what most of us who are into HF and DXing and stuff like that are very interested in. Now, with propagation, I got some videos that talk about propagation and sunspots, right, and sunspot numbers, and how the sun impacts our atmosphere, and then that impacts our ability to communicate as amateur radio operators. Um, here it talks about solar cycles, which is all good information, how to read sunspot numbers and things along those lines. Very helpful chapter. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, here's what I wanted to show. And at the end of each chapter, they really do a good job of citing any references in this bibliography uh, in case you want to do more investigation or read at a deeper level. And as I mentioned, a lot of these are actually contained in the electronic download that you get with this book. Um, here's just a section on loop antennas. Not that I want to spend a bunch of time talking about loop antennas, but I wanted to show how it goes over um, different types of loop antennas. Like you have your square, your quad loops. It talks about impedance and any kind of matching networks that you might want to have. Here's a section on radiation patterns and takeoff angle. You'd want to learn about this um, as you're building your antennas to make sure you understand how it's going to perform for you. And here's another chapter here on... Uh, dipole arrays and log periodics and the format is very similar to what we saw with the loop antennas but now it's specific to these types uh, it talks about some basic design principles and it has some really good diagrams like this one in here that you can use uh, more diagrams that talk about different directors and reflectors here's an example of an antenna here um, really handy stuff it gets a little technical as i mentioned before you start to see some of this but um you should be able to read through this and get a basic understanding and then build upon that as you continue your study of antenna theory. So here's chapter eight, uh, antenna modeling, and it talks about different things. And <clears throat> what's important is, is a lot of times people model an antenna and expect the real world antenna to act that way. Um, when you model antennas, really what it is, it's a model of your antenna, not a copy of your antenna. And it is how it would perform in a controlled environment as specified by your modeling software. It doesn't actually say this is exactly how your antenna is going to work. So that's something that's a little bit important to know. Uh, here it talks just about different types of modeling software. And uh, they talk about cars a little bit. But uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, handy. And they talk about like some of the different software that's really popular, like these NEC modeling engines. So uh, just, just good information. Here are some examples that I wanted to show where it would cover 
uh, different ways that you could mount or construct your antennas at your QTH and just different considerations that you wanted to wanted to, to look at. It's really helpful in that you get data tables, you get the uh, language description, and then you get these, these diagrams to kind of help paint that entire picture for you. Um, like the other sections, here's one uh, particularly on Yagi's and quad antennas. And you can like learn about the director, your driven elements and reflectors and how all of these things work together to propagate your signal. Uh, it goes over again, uh, your polar plots or your, your far field plots and, and your radiation patterns. Uh, lots of good information about gain, uh, if that's something that you're interested in learning about. Uh, here's a, a pretty cool chapter, chapter 14, and it is really around HF antenna system design. Uh, and then it starts off with some design basics, and it kind of walks through how you would design an antenna system uh, based off of things like here's desires and limitations. So that would be how you want to use your antenna, what, what um, bands you want to operate on, uh, making a diagram of your location so you would understand any impacts of anything in your, in your near, near field, for example, like swing sets or campers and things like that. Um, goes through the, the case of building a plan. Now, this is all a little bit more advanced. Typically, what I would recommend for new hams or hams who are starting to build their own antennas is start with the basics, like build dipoles and fed uh, wire antennas, play around with those, get an understanding of how you construct those, how you mount those, how you measure those, and how they perform, and then start to get into more advanced systems like this. And there's a section here that I wanted to highlight, uh, NVIS. Now, that's something that uh, always seems to confuse people a little bit, but uh, it's covered here and can help you be a little bit better educated of when you'd want to use NVIS and why you would want to use it and how to actually accomplish that task. So it's really handy. Uh, section on VHF, UHF, and microwave antennas, which I thought uh, was pretty good. Um, here is an antenna that uh, actually have a video on building is these ground plane antennas for two meters. They work really, really well, um, and they're easy to build, and you learn about antenna theory while you're doing this kind of work. So again, from a cookbook standpoint, um, that's really cool. Here's a better example here of what these antennas look like. Um, again, it's a fun, it's a fun project, uh, good build, and they perform great information about uh, J-pole antennas, another very common antenna. Um, collinear antennas. So it's just really, really good information um, if you wanted to build something here. So here's another section, uh, chapter 16 for VHF and UHF uh, mobile and rover antennas. And uh, here's an example here, but basically it goes over um, different plots, uh, radiation patterns. Uh, here's a section on mobile whips. And it really just goes over um, some considerations if you're going to mount antennas on your car, like here's uh, NMO mounts, and if you want to drill a drill a hole in your roof for the car, I ha I'm not that brave. I haven't done that, <laughs> but um, just handy stuff. Uh, section on uh, clip or lip mounts. That's what I use, and I'm really happy with it. Um, and it just goes over the different types of mounting options that you can that you can use in your vehicle. Here's a section on using dishes, um, dish antennas for satellites, uh, and it goes into a lot of detail here. Uh, I'm not particularly one of these guys who chases the birds, but uh, it is very, very popular. And so this might be something that you want to take a look at. And then also positional control. So that's where you can, can direct or point your antenna. Um, pretty cool stuff. So here in chapter 19, like the other book, um, is some information about portable antennas. Um, and this is really popular with folks who are doing things like soda and poda. And then a lot of people do what's called backyard portable, where they might live in an HOA. So they go out and they set up a temporary antenna in the backyard, play around with it, take it down. Um, but it goes over a bunch of different types. So you have your horizontal antennas. Um, I highlighted this um, NFED half wave. This is one of my favorite antennas. I have a permanent mount NFED half wave here at the QTH, but it's the antenna that I use the most wherever I go. Um, and a lot of a lot of my friends and folks that I hang around um, all use the same ones because they're relatively easy to construct um, so, and grasp why and how they work. Um, and they work really well. A very popular option of antenna these days is the NFED half wave. And what do we have here? Just different different mounting options uh, for your antennas. So this one kind of looks like the buddy pole, but then uh, here is a delta uh, loop, and then here's like different mounting options for that. Some information about masts 
And then you have some other stuff here that you might want to take a look at. Ferry cores for uh, CMC suppression. Um, pretty handy stuff. Uh, here's um, a vertical antenna mount fed with uh, twin line and then it has an elevated ground plane and it covers that. Now, this is a um, chapter here or section here in this chapter for indoor antennas. It goes over how to connect your antenna into your tuner and into your radio. And th this one's kind of funny. Um, I have a buddy that actually has an antenna like this where he just runs around the top of his house. And when he was first telling me about this antenna and how he mounted it, you know, it was years ago, I was like, dude, you're crazy. That's never going to work. But uh, he loves it. So and, uh, he got the idea from, from this book, I believe. Let's see what we have here. Um, receiving and direction finding antennas. <clears throat> so what's ex uh, interesting about receiving antennas is a lot of times folks will have uh, a radio that supports uh, one antenna for uh, transmitting and receiving uh, port and then a port just for receiving. So a lot of folks will use like ground loops or beverage antennas. And I believe the beverage antenna is the one that uh, is on the next page right here. It talks all about the beverage antenna. And these are really popular uh, for folks who might be in uh, North America trying to listen to folks in the UK or folks in the UK trying to listen to folks in North America. And uh, these, these beverage antennas can hear better than some of the other antennas. So you use that to see if you can pick up a station and hear them and then attempt to work them with a directional um, or whatever antenna. But uh, it's just interesting reading. Here's some uh, information about transmission lines. And, you know, folks will argue and talk about their tra preferred transmission lines and why they use them. And here goes over different types of coax and the different types of shielding in there, as well as twin, uh, twin feed or ladder line. Um, and giving some information there, uh, some section here on common mode current, which is uh, something that t tends to get folks and they might not realize it causing problems. And then there's some information around attenuation and line loss that you t can experience depending upon your transmission line. So just a, just really good information. Um, here's a section I, I, I highlighted, uh, power loss due to SWR, and there's some debate there too as well. But again, this book is just filled with all kinds of information that you, uh, that you probably should know as a ham and as you, as you grow uh, as an amateur radio operator. This is a, a pretty good section talking a little bit about SWR and resistance and um, I'm sorry, resonance. And what folks do is they always look at SWR as the primary measure or metric for their antenna, and they might not want to do that. Um, so just better educating yourself on impedance, what that really is, what it means, what resonance really is and means um, versus SWR. It's a great section on that. And then what I did here is um, highlighted a section for including and choosing your feed lines. And I don't want to say that there's a lot of crappy um, coaxial cable out there, but there really is. But there's also coaxial cable that might be appropriate for one job, but not appropriate for another because it reacts differently with frequency and you get more line loss typically at higher frequencies. And so you can come in here and like, for example, this tells you your attenuation in decibels for hundred feet for all these different types of coaxial cables. And you can kind of figure out which one is going to work best for you and your antenna installation. Uh, it has a section on antenna uh, materials and construction, which is something we saw in the other book. Uh, and it starts off talking about different types of wire that uh, you may want to use. And then with wire, you have considerations like bandwidth and velocity factor. Um, here's a good one on tension because a lot of times we have these wires will actually help hold our antennas up. Um, it has a data table here on copper wire that uh, you might want to be taking a look at. But just good, interesting stuff. And then, uh, you know, I don't want to be a safety Sally, but with with amateur radio operations, um, we do things that sometimes are a little dangerous. Uh, one of those is climbing towers. So it has a really good section here around uh, electricity you may have running up your, your tower. So some safety considerations you want to take into place there, as well as harnesses and, and uh, these carabiners that you use to attach yourself to a tower, if in fact you're going to do any kind of climbing. Um, just really taking that into consideration. It seems like every year in the news, we hear a little bit about um, amateur radio operators who get injured or possibly even die falling off of a tower. Um, it's no joke. It's definitely something that needs to be taken uh, seriously. And then uh, as we're starting to get towards the end of the book, um, let's see what we have here. Antenna and transmission line measurements. Um, 
so here it talks about uh, line current and voltage, um, the use of things like RF meters and volt meters. Um, it goes actually through different types of circuits that you might want to use and some equipment um, that you can actually build. It has some schematics here and stuff, but you may want to build a circuit to, to look at testing SWR or maybe you have RFI on a cable or something like that. Or you maybe need to build like a field strength meter to understand uh, radiation patterns and stuff like that. So it has a little bit of cookbook DIY stuff in here, which is uh, really fantastic. Then uh, this is just another example, I think, that I put in here of different devices that uh, they talk about building. Here's RF, RF power measurements. Um, just interesting, just interesting stuff all the way around. And then uh, one of my favorite things, so if you if you watch my channel much at all, I'm always using these vector network analyzers, nano VNAs, um, to characterize antenna systems, transmission lines, filters, um, things along things along those lines. Uh, really powerful tools, and it goes over things like S parameters or scattering parameters. I actually have a video on that, and I have one on return loss. And uh, you can really understand these things. Um, I'm not telling anybody to go out and buy stuff. But the, if you have a VNA, like the Nano VNA, you really can get a lot of insight into your antenna systems, your transmission lines, tuners. Um, you can really learn a lot, and it's a really capable, inexpensive tool. Just don't buy a fake or a clone. Here's some information about different software that you can use. And like the other book that we looked at, it has a pretty pretty comprehensive glossary of terms because you're going to come across things like here's a capacitance hat. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not, but you may hear a term that's unfamiliar to you or somebody might be using it in conversation and you can come here and look that up. And then last, it has a really com uh, comprehensive index that you can use to find things in the book. So for example, if you were looking for antenna tuners for uh, right here, Justin T networks are balanced. Um, just this handy all around good information that's really gonna gonna wrap up the video um the only thing i'll say is is that this is a fantastic book you can't go wrong by buying it or keeping it on your bookshelf and it might be something that uh, you want to consider anyhow if you have any questions comments suggestions or recommendations go ahead and post them below and i'll do my best to respond thanks for watching everybody